could have your attention, please, because I, I know that uh, I may give you a chance to slip out a little early tonight because of uh, the rain. I guess it'll come. I tell you, I've lost confidence in the weather department, along with the news, <laughs> along with everything man's got to do with it. I don't trust none of it. It's such a, it's such a weird time we live in. It is, uh, you know, uh, I was reading today, the uh, Israelis, they have finally come out to lead the world in the truth about the COVID vaccine. And they came out with a study that encompassed, oh, thousands and thousands of people. And uh, they said that, uh, the, uh, that there were widespread uh, negative reactions to the COVID vaccine. Now, our media and our government tells us it's rare. They came out and had proof that it wasn't rare. Quite the contrary, uh, it was regular. And, uh, and then uh, it turns out that, uh, uh, that the long COVID that you hear so much about is really uh, more of a different type of respiratory illness that we've all been catching rather than trying to make it long COVID. So, uh, and then of course our House Committee uh, came out today and said that uh, the, uh, the virus was a biological weapon. Now this is the House uh, Republican uh, investigators released a report today that said that the virus, they believe based on what information they have, they said what's in the public and what's not in the public, was that it was a biological weapon. And, uh, and, of course, America and China would never, ever admit to that. They're just not going to do it. I mean, I get to looking at some of these Egyptians and Amorites and, and uh, Assyrians in the Bible. Look, they lied all the time. They didn't think anything about lying. We live in a, in a mindset that, that people tell the truth. When in, the Bible said that, uh, uh, that uh, the father of lies is the devil, so people lie. Nations lie, especially those that turn against God. Why wouldn't they? If, if a person can turn against God, why wouldn't they lie? That's right. I mean, what moral compass do they have? They have none. So you get these anti-God, anti-Christ countries. I don't care if they say, we don't have a nuclear weapon. Uh, would we believe them? No, because you can't believe them about health statistics and health data. With all that in mind, we're looking at Judges chapter 13, and you say, well, how's that related? Well, because we're getting a visual in these chapters of how a country who gets away from God or turns against God or, or gets backslidden or gets out of the will of God, just how bad you can get. And, uh, and so the children of Israel uh, have now again in chapter 13, and the children of Israel did evil again, in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Now, this is the longest time of oppression that they'll have. Uh, this, this really does take you up to the time of Samuel, which uh, uh, we'll see we've already been through. But uh, this, this is a uh, fascinating thing because we've already been through Gideon and Japheth. And the others, and now here again, rather than them get right with God, they did temporarily. And then the last few judges before Samson, if you call, there was two or three names, didn't have anything said good. They just give their names and how many kids they had and how many grandkids they had, how many uh, uh, donkeys they had. And so we get to this particular situation and we're in the midst of a, a big oppression. These Philistines mind you, have been around for quite some time, a couple hundred years. And uh, they're constantly oppressing them, and then yet uh, they're being fought back against. And uh, they will continue to oppress uh, and, and affect and persecute the children of Israel 
uh, periodically all the way up to the time of David. Now we're still uh, probably two to three hundred years away from David. About two hundred years here with uh, Samson. Maybe a little longer than two hundred. And uh, David, of course, we know what happened to the Philistines under him when he slew Goliath. They came out to mock the people of God and he got that slingshot and, and his sword, cut the guy's head off, and that pretty much was the last you heard of the Philistines in the Bible. Uh, today they reported in Israel, in the caves where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they reported of a little wooden box that they found, uh, and in it, this fascinating thing, they had uh, purple purple uh, cloth that stayed purple for 2,200 years and uh, some cotton and in the jar uh, several coins in absolutely fantastic condition that were printed during the time of Antioch Epiphanes, the great uh, uh, hated king, uh, uh, the Seleucid king that shut down Jewish worship in the temple. Now, when you get to the end of Malachi, before Matthew, we call that the 400 silent years. Well, in those 400 silent years, you've got Alexander the Great. Then you've got the Hasmonean kingdom, which included Herod the king when Jesus was born. So there's nothing in the Bible about those years minus a few things the Lord Jesus said while he lived on this earth that alluded to some of it. But there's no books. Of course, the Maccabees, uh, which uh, never was looked at as canon by Bible believers. They know the difference between a Bible book written by the Holy Spirit of God uh, and a man chronicling history. And it's pretty evident, if you've ever read any of the Maccabee books or any of the books in the Apocrypha, they do not have any quality like, you know, the books of the Bible we read. Although they have some very interesting history in there, but they don't have any biblical quality. So it wasn't easy. It was the Roman church that adopted them in because they had some things they could use to support their position. Well, we get to this one. And we're coming to a time, 40 years. And look there in verse number 2. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. She is one of seven women that had births that we call miraculous births. In fact, uh, she, uh, 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 you know, she didn't... Her, her birth was actually announced by the angel of God. A lot of similarities between Mary and Manoah's wife. Uh, I, I'm working on a message. Uh, I don't know if I'll get it this year. Uh, but it is the seven women in the Bible that had miraculous type births. And they, the seven women lead up to the real miracle birth, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. But God gives us some pre-runs, some pre-trailers, uh, if you would, uh, of how the, God can do anything with anybody. And uh, it's a pretty fascinating study on that. But Manoah's wife's one of them. She was without child. She could not have a child. Barren, as the Bible said, and notice it was of the Dan, the Danites. Now, odd thing about it, over in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, uh, Jacob, on his dying bed, said, and there shall, the Danites shall, uh, of Dan shall judge his brethren. Here we have a judge coming out of the Danites that are going to judge Israel. The prophetic utterance of back in, oh, thousands, a couple thousand years before with Jacob, uh, it's pretty fascinating that he laid that out. And, uh, of course, the tribe of Dan was 
one of the smallest tribes uh, there was. And, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, they had, I think, the, the smallest landmass. They were never really looked at too much, but here we got, a, we got a judge coming out of the tribe of Dan, which is in itself fascinating because there's not been anything much come out of the tribe of Dan. So, so here we've got, uh, it tells us who, who this was, where they came from. In verse 3, the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Kind of like the announcement the angel gave to Mary. Hey, uh, thou shalt conceive and bear a child. So it's the angel of the Lord, of course, uh, no doubt is the appearance of the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this is the, the Word uh, appearing. And, and not only he's appeared before, remember he appeared to Gideon. And some of the same things the angel of the Lord did with Gideon, he's going to do the same thing with Samson and Samson's parents. And so they, they now I want to say this, that there was no wings on this angel. None. I mean, every time you see an angel, you see wings on it. But this angel, like all the other angels that appeared to mankind, this was the angel of the Lord, appeared as a man. Have you ever thought about that verse in Hebrews that said, Beware lest ye entertain angels unaware? I mean, I, it wouldn't be unaware if somebody popped up with wings. I would say that was an angel, <laughs> you know. Apparently, angels, the, the angel can, or angels can present themselves as men. It happened in Sodom, remember that? They, the, the perverted crowd saw them and said, send these men out. And they were sent from heaven, angels. And this is the angel, and he gives her a miraculous announcement. Yeah, you hadn't been able to have a child, but you're fixing to have one. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Think about this. This is not Samson. This is his mother. So his mother wasn't supposed to have any kind of strong drink or wine or, or forbidden fruit. I think this is sort of a fascinating thing here, and I've used that word three times tonight, but I'm telling you, this stuff, when I, when I look at this, I get to the point where I'm overwhelmed with how God works throughout history of mankind to weave truth all through the events. Most of it is passed over without recognition, but some of it jumps out at you Remember Eve? She, what did she get? The forbidden fruit? Why would God tell the mother along with the son, don't eat or drink wine or strong drink? Look with me to Numbers chapter, I believe, 6. Numbers chapter 6. Because here is the Nazarite command. And uh, Samson, of course, is a Nazarite. The mother has taken Nazarite commitment. And all of that is found right there in, in, in chapter 6. And then I want you to see that I, I'm going to draw speculation based on what I think. It's not doctrinal truth. But I do have some thoughts on what's about to happen here. Chapter number 6, And the Lord spake unto Moses of Numbers. And the Lord spake unto Moses, speaking of the children of Israel and saying to them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. Well, we read about that. And shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes, or dried. You know, you can't eat raisins. 
Now, I would have been in trouble. Because the other day, I ate some chocolate-covered raisins. So I'm not a Nazarite. <laughs> but hey, I, I'm not a Nazarite from way back. <laughs> Without going into detail. But it says, uh, and look at verse 4. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk. The vine tree? Hey, is it possible that the tree in the Garden of Eden was not an apple tree but a grapevine tree? I think about what we did up here the other night when the Lord Jesus said, as long as you drink of this fruit of the vine, you need to drink it until I come again. The fruit of the vine, what, did it, what was the symbol? It was the blood. Symbolized the blood of the Lord Jesus. I, you know, what made me, I've got a lot of questions with all this. I questioned, was that a possible what Eve partook of? Was a tree that God had set aside to represent the most holy thing that would ever be, the blood of Christ. And he says, don't, that blood of Christ, don't partake of it because it's not needed in your state of innocency. Don't. That blood is for the salvation of mankind. At this point, Eve had not sinned, or Adam. And so as soon as she did disobey, of course, and Satan says, the reason why God doesn't want you to, re to eat that is because you'll be like him. <laughs> you know, so it gets, and so now, when you're separated under the Nazarite vow, that's the thing you can't touch. And then, where does the children of Israel who go over to the land of Canaan when they said, there's giant grapes over there? <laughs> it, it's just sort of confusing, isn't it? But at the same time, there may be some hidden truths in all of this. There may be. Uh, the fruit of the vine. And so here, it is the vine tree. The vine tree. And, uh, and of course, you see the rest of the vow there. It says, no razor touch his head and all of that. And so when the Lord Jesus, where did he come from? Nazareth. Said, could any good thing, the disciple, come out of Nazareth? Well, it's a place of separation, of commitment. And so back in Judges, that is the, to me, a foundation to interpret for me uh, this thing with Samson. Because Samson in the Bible is a type of Christ, not foolproof we know, but he is a judge and deliverer of Israel, and he was uh, uh, appointed and anointed of God. And so it said that the, uh, the angel told her, don't do this. And he says in verse 5, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on, upon, on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Type of the enemy of God. The children of God versus the enemy of God. And they're being oppressed. And the great deliverer is going to come and get them out of there. And so uh, a lot of typology in that. Along with the historical account. But uh, I, I really believe God records these things. And I think... Uh, we miss so much of the Bible. I, I, I know when we get to heaven, you know what we're going to do? We're going to see the Word of God for what it is. And we're going to think, why did we not spend more time? We would have had all the answers to life. We would have had wisdom beyond measure. We would have been able to see and do things that no man could see or do apart from God. I, I think that's what's going to happen. That the keys of life are locked in the pages of this book. It is a living book. And uh, I just regret at this point in my life I didn't, I didn't uh, devote more time to it. I mean, I've been preaching for 45 years, but uh, I haven't touched it. I mean, 
I've got uh, thousands of sermons. And I've studied, but I know at this point, I missed a whole bunch of stuff. And much of it is so important to understanding who we are, who I am, who you are, who God's people are. And I go, why did it have to wait till I was 70 years old to be able to hear or know some of these things that I've read over a hundred times? Just got to check my mark that I read my Bible chapters. About read four today, three tomorrow, four today, three, you know, so I can get through the Bible in a year, which I've always thought was one of the most foolish things in the world. You, you can't read the Bible like another book. It is the living Word of God. And so when you read it, it's got to speak to you. You've got to take your time. In fact, uh, it, it's like chewing uh, on, the, on a grass for a cattle. You, chew, you don't just gulp it down, you chew on it. Well, here, look what happened. The, verse 6, the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God. So she didn't, she had enough sense to know that whatever was before her, although it was the angel of the Lord, I believe it was Jesus, manifestation of Jesus. She knew it was a holy man because she called him the man of God. Now, despite the, the feminists today, they didn't say woman of God. This angel of the Lord was the man of God. See, despite what this world says today, it's male and female. See, the male has, uh, the female has two X chromosomes and the male has a Y and an X chromosome. That's biology. That's indisputable truth. Doesn't matter what you call yourself. Did y'all see, if I could interject this tonight, the lady up in Virginia who appeared before the school board who, who was blasting them for their woke agenda saying that they, they, there's boys, there's girls, and there's it's, and there's... Uh, and she, she came dressed up with a cat suit on. And she, she literally painted polka dots on her face and whiskers and put a cat nose on and had a cat ears. And she stood before the school board and said, uh, it, it, you may think that I'm a cat. I look like a cat. I'm dressed as a cat. I can even meow like a cat. But I'm here to tell you, despite what you think I am, I'm just a woman dressed up like a cat. <laughs> and she blasted that bunch, man. They were crawling under the pew, you know, crawling under the... She goes, it's time for y'all to stop this stuff. There's men, there's men, and there's women. There's boys and there's girls. And people can pretend to be whatever and dress up like they want to, but they're still boys and girls. And she didn't want her daughter being involved to having some uh, nerdy good boy who wants to think he's a girl for his own perverted purposes so he can go use the same locker room and the bathroom. Like these people, there's perversion and wicked lust at their heart. And now they're, they're wanting to teach the children this junk. See, not enough for them, to, the adults, to be like that. They want to pervert the children because they're grooming their own lust as they come up. And, they're, and according to Biden now, if you say that, yesterday when he signed that bill, we're Nazis for saying that. So to say the truth, not only the philosophical truth, but the biological truth, you're a Nazi. That's the way they label you. And so uh, there is, I heard what was one of these guys said, there's a demonic portal over the White House. And they're coming and going. And they're giving them the message, you know. So there's no other explanation that somehow you're a, you're a hater of men if you say the truth about biology. It's crazy. Well, she said it was a countenance. She goes, a man of God came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. He seems to be a prophet, but he's an awful bright prophet. Very terrible. Now, it doesn't mean dreaded. It meant fearful. Remember what happened when the angels appeared to the shepherds and he said, fear not. They were going, whoa. <laughs> kind of makes you wonder what an angel looks like. I know they can look. Well, we know Satan tries to transform himself into an angel of light. 
and you wonder what he looked like in the Garden of Eden. Moses described him as the serpent, but Moses knew who he was. And, uh, and so you just, you just don't know how he appeared. Even if he appeared as a serpent, was it a serpent like a snake? Or was it a serpent uh, like a beguiling deceiver? So she said he was very terrible, but I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. Hey, that's not the only time that happened. Uh, that's what Eve said. Eve said, I know not who it was. <laughs> you know? In the garden, she, she didn't know. She goes, uh, and then uh, uh, here it says, but he said unto me, behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. So here he is, before he was ever born, in the womb. That's why pro-lifers need to use this passage to defeat the pro-so-called choice. Uh, pro, the pro-choice people are anything but choice. They don't believe in choice. Uh, uh, but uh, this child was dedicated to God and his life uh, mapped out before he was ever out of the womb. God knew him. Not only knew him, he knew his purpose for life and he appointed him to it. Wow. Uh, so he's not going to be uh, normal. Samson's going to be a totally not a normal little boy. I guess his mama's out there going, I hope my little boy grows up to be normal. All the kids at school like him. He's not going to be normal. He's going to be stronger than everybody. <laughs> he's going to be wittier than everybody. And uh, he's going to be a deliverer. So we're going to stop right there. Because uh, we got some other verses later on to look up for the coming verses. But this thing about uh, the angel of the Lord appearing. And, uh, and, and, and this, hey, these angels were, this angel was not sexless. This, this, uh, uh, Schofield says angels are sexless. But I don't know how he came to that conclusion. Uh, that's the man. The man of God, right there. That one is the man of God. So I don't know where he came up with the sexless thing. But I, I don't I never could find it, but if you look at his notes, he'll say that. The moral of that story is don't believe anything for sure except the word of God. <laughs> you can count on the book. You can believe that. But uh I, I get these commentaries in my office, and I, you know I've got more than I need or ever will finish. But I tell you, if you want to see some ideas come up from people who, who, who take what men have written and said about something, and they parrot it down through the centuries, to where you know you pick up a, 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 a guy today, and he's actually read the last 200 years or 300 years of what's been said about the passage. And once somebody says something 300 years ago, that's what's preached as doctrinal truth all the way up to today. It never fails. Uh, uh, if you've got a library at your house, uh, a biblical library, uh, you'll see, uh, like I've got books where sermons go back to 1,200. And once somebody said something in 1,200, that's what most of the time you're going to hear in 2023. <laughs> and, you, and you go, how do they come up with this stuff? Uh, but anyway, you're bored, I can tell. All right, let's have a word of prayer and I'll let you go. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come tonight. We pray that as we continue to study your word that you would uh, help us, Lord, to be able to uh, understand your truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.